Today I'm going to compare five different tungsten electrodes that you might use for TIG welding. I've used all of these over the years and I get asked all the time which type of tungsten electrode is the best. It's one of my most common TIG welding questions. And the honest truth is the difference between most of them is pretty subtle and most of them would work in a lot of situations. But when you push them to the extremes, they do each have their own strengths and that's what we're going to do in this video. Now these came out of a variety pack that Blue Demon sells that has two of each. So if you want to try a bunch of different types, this is a pretty good way to do it. We're going to put them through their paces in this video. And the first thing I'm going to do is grind a consistent 30 degree taper on the front of each different one. There's nothing wrong with using a regular grinder to prep your tungsten, but I want these to be really consistent. So I'm using my tungsten grinder. It's a Stay Sharp 2 by Blue Demon. They sent this out to me as part of a different project, but I've really liked it because you can just slide the tungsten in, rotate it, and it's simple. And it also has a feature to cut them off. So if you're in the market, definitely worth a look. I got them all ground and they are ready to go. The first type we're going to look at is actually the first type I ever used and it's a green pure tungsten. Now these are not as common as they used to be and honestly I haven't welded with one for over 10 years. When I was first starting out I was working on these old transformer machines. There was a Hobart and a Miller sinker wave in my dad's auto repair shop. They just didn't have the same control of the waveform that a modern machine does. And for that reason, you'd want a ball on the end of your electrode. Pure tungsten still melts to some extent, so it can form a nice ball when welding aluminum with alternating current on a transformer machine. I don't have an actual transformer machine here in the shop, so I'm gonna set up the big Invertig because it has so much adjustability. I can simulate a transformer pretty closely. I've set it to a soft square wave with a balance of 60% electrode negative and a frequency of 60 Hertz. And that's gonna feel pretty close to a transformer machine. So with the electrode installed, let me show you how I put a ball on one of these. There's a lot of ways to do this. You can adjust your balance or things like that, but I'm just gonna turn up the amperage. This has always been the easiest way to do it. And then light up on a thick piece of material. So here on this aluminum plate, I'll just strike an arc and wait for it to ball on its own. Just hit that pedal and watch that ball form. Once it reaches a diameter pretty close to the electrode, it's good to go for an old school transformer type machine. And that's really all there is to it. And then this will be ready to weld. Now that 250 amps is gonna to be too much to use on the regular with a pure tungsten electrode that's 330 seconds of an inch. So I've turned it down to about 150 here just to run a quick bead and show you that even though this is a bit of an outdated method, it still works just fine. I can lay those dimes in there without any problem and get a result that I'm really happy with. Now for most of us running inverter type machines where we can adjust our AC balance really well, there's no reason to ever buy these green pure tungsten electrodes, but if you are running a transformer type machine, it's not a bad idea to go old school with one of these, though there are other options. Now on those older machines at that time, I also had a companion to this green tungsten and that was the red thoriated tungsten. And the thoria in here caused it to hold more of a point. It wouldn't melt quite so easily. And so this is what you'd use for DC direct current welding on steel and stainless steel and things like that. I'll go ahead and load up this thoriated red tungsten into my torch. I've switched the machine over to DC and also changed to a gas lens style uh, collet body just to give a little bit of extra visibility. Now when I'm welding on DC, this is just some low carbon steel here, but uh, on stainless steel as well, I really need that point, And that's why I can't run a pure tungsten electrode. I need to have something in it to help uh, avoid melting and keep that point. And for a long time, thoriated tungsten was the popular choice to do that. Now today, red thoriated tungsten has largely been replaced with other alternatives because there's some health hazards associated with the thoria in here. So when you're sharpening it, the dust can be more hazardous than other options. Now let's talk about some of those other alternatives with the more modern inverter type machines. So let's fast forward to 2012. Two things happened for me then. One, I went to welding trade school. I was going there at night while I was studying engineering in the day. And then I also bought my first inverter machine, which is a Miller Dynasty 200DX. At the time, Miller recommended 2% seriated for everything. And that's what this one is. It is a gray electrode. At the time, they were orange. One of the highlights of these 
is how well they can start and maintain an arc on low, low amperages. And I think that's why a lot of machine manufacturers recommended them, because they made the machines look good because they just start really well. Let's take a look at that. Let me show you what I'm talking about with the low amperage starts with these seriated tungsten electrodes, why they're so good. Now on these box cutter blades, they're not terribly difficult to weld, but what you'll rarely see somebody do is start in the middle of them. They'll start off the edge or on filler metal. And that's because most machines will start at a higher amperage than they actually weld. But here on the HDP, I'm gonna disable that feature so it'll honest to goodness start at four amps with a 330 seconds of an inch electrode. That's a very low amperage for this electrode. And look how quick and easily it just starts up. And no matter how good your machine is, the low amp starts always come down to your tungsten. I've found that seriated are some of the best to actually get that low amperage start and low amperage stability to run a weld on something like this. You can see the arc just coming right off the edge. If you ignore a little oxidation on the end where I didn't hold the post flow, you can see how clean that start is right in the middle, and that's pretty good. Now, if I turn it clear up to 200 amps on this quarter inch thick on DC, it can hang with that as well. It holds up just fine, feeding a lot of rod in. What I'm really looking at is how well the point on the electrode is holding up. And I'll run several beads here and we'll go ahead and try it. I'm going full pedal on 200 amps. So I'm having to move along a little quick. It's a little hot, but after the fact, it's still pointed. Now when I moved to these, it was pretty remarkable to be able to use the same electrode on aluminum. So this is the same, just sharp prep, and I get a reasonable result uh, with it there. And after welding some aluminum, you can see that the end of the electrode is still in good shape. That was welded about 160 amps for a 1 8 inch T-joint. Now if you turn it up, here is where these seriated electrodes run out of steam from my experience. I'm going to run it at 250 amps, which is really pushing the limit for this diameter of electrode to be honest. But this is where you'll start to run into some trouble and you'll get some flicker and flutter there at the end. And notice the deformed end there and some nodules forming. Those, from my experience, just continue to grow as you run them, and they can start fluttering around and cause problems. Worst case, it can even spit some small pieces of tungsten into your weld pool. Now, the seriated tungsten is still a great choice, and especially at those lower amperages. I mean, those low amp starts, if you're struggling with that, the seriated tungsten can really help out quite a bit, and I think they work, work pretty good. Um, they do form some of those nodules at the top end of the range. And so about five years ago, um, there's a lot of talk about using a lanthanated or a blue tungsten electrode. So I started using those and they're very similar to the seriated electrodes, except they're a little bit more comfortable higher in the amperage range, at least from my experience. If you've had different experience or if you've had the same, let me know in the comments because I'd love to start a discussion about some of this. But uh, what I've found is these work a little bit better at the higher amperage ranges for uh, these thicknesses. So I'm going to do the same thing, just stacking several beads here on a plate at 250 amps, going full pedal. It's going to get a little hot on the plate uh, for my weld, but uh, regardless, I'm just trying to run and exercise that electrode with a lanthanated electrode this time and see how that tip compares to the seriated electrode. Notice there is a bit of a ball, but I'm not getting those same nodules. And that's what's nice about the lanthanated electrodes. When you start running higher amperages, you're getting onto aluminum, you can just push that amperage range a little further. But notice how it struggles with the four amp arc start. I, th this has just been my experience. They don't start quite as easily at that super low range. Now that's way below the range for that electrode. If I come ease on to it right around 10 amps, then I get a good start. So, you know, that's still really impressive. It says something about the machine, but also um, that these electrodes are still pretty versatile that you can, you can start them at 10 amps but that lower amperage arc starting and stability just isn't quite as good as the seriated from my experience. Again, you may have uh, some different experience. I'd love to hear that in the comments. Now in the last year or so, I've tried out some of these multi-mix tungsten electrodes. They, uh, the Blue Demon one is pink. There's the CK Worldwide, which is chartreuse. They call it laser, which is a pretty cool name. Um, and several others, some are purple. But uh, basically, they use multiple different uh, elements to give you a good variety of properties. And I've found that these can be 
a pretty good mix of both worlds, giving you that low end more similar to a serrated and the high end similar to a lanthanated tungsten. So go ahead and load up the multi-mix here to uh, try this one out. We'll start off with that four amp arc start and look how quick that popped right at four amps. And I can just camp out right there on that knife edge without even forming a puddle till I ramp on the pedal again. These box cutter blades aren't really that difficult to weld. You know, you're running somewhere 20, 25 amps, but to be able to start there on the middle without popping through takes the adjustability of the machine to give that true low amp start, and that cannot happen without the right tungsten electrode. So to be able to do that with a 332nd inch electrode, which is pretty large for this low amperage, uh, is pretty impressive in my opinion. Now I moved on to run the same bead on plate test. I'm 250 amps, full pedal here, so I'm overheating my material a little bit by the time I get to the end of it. But the point is just to exercise the tungsten and see how that looks. And after running all those beads, if we take a look, it has a little bit of a ball on the end, but it still maintains a pretty good point and the nodules are minimal. So it's kind of the best of both worlds with those low amp arc starts and also the ability to hang at the high end when you're running one of these bull-time mix. Unless you're running an old style transformer type machine, I'd pass on the green one. No need for the pure. I'd pass on the red thoriated because I think the alternatives work just as well and there's no need to introduce any additional health risk, uh, you know, however well that could be managed. Now between the last three, seriated, lanthanated, and the multi-mix, for most people, it's not going to make any difference. And I think in a lot of situations, a lot of even seasoned welders would have a hard time telling the difference unless you're pushing it to one of the extremes. So if you have one you're already using, I don't think it's necessary to run out of the store and buy some different one. But lately I've been buying this multi-mix. I, I think it works pretty well and, and that's what I've been going with. Now along those lines, this is one of the types of things that I consider an optimization. So if you're struggling with your TIG welding in general, let's say you're in my classes and you haven't finished the lessons up through welding the common joints, I wouldn't even mess with this type of thing because you'll get a lot more traction by focusing on the fundamental elements of technique like your arc length, your torch angle, your travel speed, adding your filler metal, those types of things are gonna do a lot more for getting you a nice weld. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. We'll see you next time.